This episode of the Red and White Podcast is brought to you by Nick Overcash from Prime Lending. Uh, Nick is a diehard Wolfpack fan and an all-around good guy. He can help you with all your mortgage needs, purchasing, refinancing, construction loans. Personally, I know Nick. I'm a big fan of Nick. He's smart, and you can trust him. You can trust he's going to get you the best setup for your needs. So if you're in the market for a house or refi, refi loan or whatever, reach out to Nick, 919-854-4457, or visit nickovercash.com. If you mention this podcast, it'll give you 500 off your closing costs. That's pretty hard to beat. This episode is also, also brought to you by trashtalktext.com. Send your friends one trash talk text each day or every 15 minutes or every any interval you want for only a quarter. Check out trashtalktext.com. And let's get started. All right, folks, we're back with another edition of the Red and White Podcast. I'm your host, Evan, and here we have Dustin. He's back. Welcome back, Dustin. I appreciate it. Uh, quick side thing. Uh, thanks, everybody, for checking on me when I was out in base. I, uh, it was a little hectic. I thought to you know text my wife and my mom, and uh, I, I, the only reason I checked it on Facebook was because it popped up and asked me if I was safe. So Twitter would have been a good idea. Um, but I appreciate all the concern and then pre uh, apology for this. I'm still sick and, uh, I'll try and keep my coughing and all that to a minimum. And, uh, I I'm talking as loud as I can. So I apologize for that too. <laughs> uh, thanks for everybody for the audio feedback too. We're trying to, to make the audio more consistent and better. So continually uh, reaching out and you know letting us know if it sounds better, if it uh, if it's consistent for you, that's really that's really helpful for us. And also, I can't emphasize enough thanks to our sponsors. And uh, if you guys are in the market for a refi or you know just want to have some fun, you know engaging with our sponsors really helps us out. Uh, helps us out with better equipment, better sound, and all that stuff. So uh, that's all the business talk for now. Dustin went up to pit. Got the W, started slow, found a way to win. How do you feel about it? I think it was a game they needed, honestly. Um, I don't say we had been handling things easily, but it was nice to face more adversity than we – to actually be down, I guess, is kind of nice. Uh, we don't need to, to lead every game and then go into Clemson thinking we're just going to come out and dominate again. We, It's nice to see them down a little bit. Um, come back and I mean they finished strong the game wasn't a game after the first half so it was nice to see yeah the, f- the first half was a-, a little concerning you know they just didn't play well yeah, for whatever reasons there was drops it's usually guys aren't focused I didn't think Finley was great in the first half uh, and you know I think but I think teams in the past eight teams in the past probably would have lost that game right that's just one of those let down games that we've seen and people are so worried about but that they came out in the second half, held Pitt to three points, and basically dominated that game or dominated the second half. It shows that this this is not the same Wolfpack of you know previous years, right? It's a different team. They're older, they're more experienced. They've seen this kind of thing before, you know. So I I felt pretty good about it. I think it was like you said. I think it was a good 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 thing to have, right? A good a good test. Pitt's not awful. I mean. They have some talent. They're in the ACC, but you know, to to come out and play slow and then being able to respond in the second half, I mean, that that, that shows a lot for this team, and it, and it makes me feel a lot better about the rest of the season, second half of the season. I think um, you know, Naheem Hines <laughs> can't say enough about how well he's been playing lately. Uh, you know, just to start. I guess you could say slow start to season, but whatever. The last few games, he's just been unbelievable. And, and this is the kind of game you, we were hoping to see from him. We talked about how come he hasn't busted through one of those holes before. And he did. He busted through and, you know, 75-yard run, then a 92-yard punt return. The guy is explosive. And you can see why uh, he's getting a lot of attention. And he made, I forgot who it was, AP midseason All-American team. As the all-around player, which is which is kind of ironic because of Jalen Samuels, but you know Hines is getting a lot of attention and he's really filling in uh, for Matt Day as well. I mean, it's a different kind, but I mean he's he's on pace for 
1,200 yards, I think. I mean, it's hard to beat. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I can't can't remember the exact uh, stat or number or even who sent it to me, but somebody sent me something that said that uh, the last person to basically do what he did with the you know, a touchdown run and then kick return right after. I'm pretty sure that was it. But the last college player to do that was uh, Maurice Jones-Drew. Wow. <laughs> Something along those lines. So I, I can't remember the exact – technical whatever it was but he was the first player to do something since mjd was in college so that's pretty good i would think that's crazy yeah i mean he's he's showing us something he's showing everybody something he's showing why he's he's electric why he's leading uh running back in the acc and i think that's better than days he's just different than days i think mad days was just reliable you know he's he's gonna run those clips but i think Hines has more High end potential, if that makes any sense. Like he's yeah, more liable to, that. to to bust one, but he's not as likely to grind out the you know thirty carries, three yards a carry, and still get his hundred yards. You know that kind of thing. I just I don't think that's the kind of player he is. I think he's going to bust more than he's going to grind. But I think <clears throat> if you look at it across the board, and we talked about this last week with Dave. The, the offensive line is what's creating this. I mean, they're playing phenomenal. I mean, Finley hasn't been sacked. They're opening up holes. I mean, it's just – it's really impressive what Ledford has done with this offensive line. And that makes a big difference in your running game. And like you were saying from week one, run the ball and you know, have a lot more success. And I think we're starting to see that a lot lately because they're, they're really committing to the run. Yeah, and it's made the offense better overall. Uh, I didn't mean to just continuously harp on running the ball, but we had to get balance. Like we had to get some balance. Uh, yeah. You knew that that wasn't that wasn't going to work once we got into conference play, and uh, I think it's it's turned out pretty well. I would like to have the South Carolina game back. I'd like to play that one again with the O line that we have now. Yeah, and see I, I how think, that goes. I think that's a big that was a big difference, and I, I'm pretty sure everybody's kind of seeing that. And South Carolina, I mean, they have a good defense. They're, they're giving everybody fits on the defensive side of the ball, and we smoked them on the offense. So, I mean, it makes you feel pretty good that at least you have that. I, I would, you know, everybody wants that game back, but I don't think it's gonna the hold us back from the the potential this team has. It's funny. I was watching uh, South Carolina and Tennessee on Saturday. And I told somebody, I'm like, you know, if you had told me before the season started that both my teams would lose to South Carolina, I would have thought it was going to be a shitty year. But, you know, <laughs> the state's doing all right. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Go back to the pit game. Uh, the weird thing was, and I don't know why Pat Narduzzi switched quarterbacks. I know they burned the red, sh- red shirt on. Uh, Pinkett and everybody was mad or Pickett, whatever his name was. And everybody was mad the week before because it was one play. And then they just, you know, Danucci seemed to be playing well. And all of a sudden the new kid's in. And I don't know if he got hurt or whatnot, but it was a uh, big benefit to our offense that they left him in the entire second half. Yeah, that's why he's on a career trajectory that has him as the head coach at Pitt. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't see the benefit of that. I, I mean, he's trying to get something done, I guess, but I don't know. They played well in the first half. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's weird. Uh, going back to us, looking at uh, guys who have performed well, and even though Finley started off slow, he ended up uh, – uh, ironically, you look at the pro football focus, gr- they grade out the team every week in the highest uh, – I don't know if it was for the league. I think it's for the league. And Finley was the highest performing quarterback. And he's gotten a lot of attention. You start looking at NFL draft, and now he's like number five or number eight, somewhere in that range for uh, projected NFL quarterbacks. Right. I mean, that's insane. Like, he's yeah. playing his way into, into the league. He's playing smart, and he's doing all the things you need to do. And he's showing – everybody's giving him a lot of love. So, I mean, that's amazing. I didn't think he had that much progress after one year. Yeah, I guess it's just him being familiar with the system. Um, the wide receivers have stepped up a lot, too. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know that we've had a better better wide receiving core in, in God knows how long. So, uh, 
but he's not taken away from them. I mean, he's he's putting the ball exactly where it needs to be. So uh, even when it's not going to playmakers, I mean, he's he rarely makes bad throws. So that's his. I mean, that's all we can ask. Kelvin Harvin, Kelvin Harmon has bailed him out of <laughs> several underthrown balls. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like he just constantly out jumps the defensive backs and comes down with the ball. It's amazing. It's amazing what he does. And he's only a sophomore. He's he is legit. He's had some guys beat too, and if Finley throw over, you know, throws a little farther, he'll likely catch it in stride. But he has no problem stopping and finding the ball, and, you know, high pointing it. It's it's really impressive. He's really good. You know, and Steph Lewis is playing well, and Jacoby Myers is starting to become one of Finley's more reliable targets. I mean, they're all. I mean, they're all helping him out, like you said. And you, you know, you throw in. Jalen Samuels and consider him a wide receiver or tight end or whatever you want. And that, that core right there is it's hard to defend, man. That's some, that's some good, good talent there. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, that's all I got for Pitt. It was a good win. Glad to see it. The struggle didn't really bother me. I, everybody kind of expected the way they rebounded was really impressive. Uh, it gives me a lot of hope moving forward. You got anything else for Pitt? Um, no, I mean, it, 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 we did what we needed to do. We came out with a win. So, I mean, that's, uh, we're in a weird, weird spot where it's, uh, it's extremely important that we win every week. You know, usually by now it's, uh, we were laughing by by this point. It's like, well, what, what do we have left to win? What are we going to have to win to get to a bowl game? And we've already wrapped up a bowl eligible season so now it's uh where do we go from here and uh, this next few weeks are crucial for the program so uh uh, you might say oh well it was just pit well that win against pit is is huge every win is huge now so absolutely i think that's with the way you know clemson lost comes with syracuse friday night and lost and that you know puts us in driver's seat for the Atlantic and go out and play your game and play, you know, what this team's capable of. And the Atlantic's there for the taking, man. And that's, that's really exciting. I, I will say that Carson wise missed a field goal. Probably as bad <laughs> as I've ever seen a kicker miss a field goal. I mean, he hooked that. And I don't think, I don't think it went out of the back of the end zone. I think it went out of the side of the end zone. It was unbelievable. That was atrocious. It was, it was awful. It was a duck hook of all duck hooks. And I hit a lot of duck hooks before. He snapped the hell out of that one. That was <laughs> so bad. <laughs> that's 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 like my concern. I think that's everybody's concern is, you know, kicking. I feel like it's going to cost us at some point. You get in a close game and nobody can feel good about that. Hey, Clemson missed field goals against Syracuse and you saw what happened. So. Exactly. Exactly. And we knew Syracuse was a team. Or, you know, they're not as bad as um, maybe earlier conversations. But and Dino Babers is a hell of a coach who's going to get all kinds of attention. But still, you, you don't expect Clemson to lose that one. And Syracuse just outplayed him uh, on all sides of the ball. And, and it's tough. Without Kelly Bryant, Clemson's just not as dynamic on offense there. He he makes – he covers up for a lot of, I don't know, inconsistencies they have. So, anyway, going into the bye week, got to get healthy. Nobody really listened on the injury report outside of the guys that are out for the year. But still, you know, bumps and bruises playing six games. It's – it couldn't come at a better time. And I'm just going to sit around and watch Notre Dame and USC and Clemson, Georgia Tech – Hopefully, uh, get get bruised around because we have them both coming up. Yeah, I'd like to see Notre Dame have a tough game but win. Yeah, I don't think USC is that great, so I can see that happening. I don't know what you know. Notre Dame's highly ranked, but have they played anybody? No, I, I don't think Notre Dame's near as good as the ranking. Um, no, I, I watched their first half against Carolina. We'll get into this more next week. <laughs> I watched their first half against Carolina, and it wasn't. Wasn't that impressive? I, I did see when they put out those midseason All American teams, 
the Notre Dame fans went ballistic that Josh Adams, their running back, wasn't anywhere mentioned on there. It's like, well, you know, play somebody. Nobody's, you know, whatever. Uh, I'd like to see. I think I think I'm with you. I'd like to see Notre Dame win, kind of feel good about themselves, and then coming into the state game rather than trying to face adversity and them trying to rally and all that jazz. I did read an SB Nation article that said Notre Dame, this is their toughest stretch of games in history. And then they broke it down why. They have USC, State, Wake, Miami, Navy, Stanford. I mean, it's a pretty strong little run there. Yeah. I mean, you get I mean, – They should have Navy off. I mean, I, I don't think – And I'm still I, – I, I can't decide if Wake's a good team or not. I, <laughs> um, I think they are. I, yeah. I think they're good. I say enough that to, and they'll beat us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're good enough to challenge Notre Dame, but I can see why that Notre Dame's worried about it. I, I feel good that we're, I don't say right in the middle, but right after the USC, which is probably their highest profile game, to win that one, and I'd love for them to feel all great about themselves. Yeah. Plus, I think we're in a, a spot where we too. have to we have to start looking for strength of schedule and stuff like that. So um, the more they win, the better off we are, you know? Yeah. It's weird to talk like that, but I mean, if you're going to be a big boy program, this is, these are the kind of things you talk about. So, uh, we, you know, we're, I don't, I don't want to talk about what could happen at the end of the year, but um, <laughs> I will say that the number one plays the number four in new Orleans on January 1st. And I will be there. If, if need be. So uh, that would be insane. Cause, cause I'm pretty sure the ACC team is going to be the four and number one is definitely going to be Bama. So, wow. Yeah. That's even crazy to just, just talk about, but these next two games really could, could set something crazy up. So speaking on, along those lines, I've seen everybody mention it and they, it, there's a lot of people saying, well, I'll just focus on the next game. It's like, we're fans. We can focus on whatever we want to. It doesn't have any impact in the game. I understand the the historical jinx value and NC State shit, but I don't I don't buy in I don't buy into that. I don't think I don't think we should. No. And I'm, I I think you should enjoy it. I think you just enjoy this while that happens, right? It's not gonna happen every year. It might happen every, you know, five years or whatever, but just Enjoy the ride and think about the possibilities. That's the fun part of it. That's the fun part of being, about being a fan. The team, absolutely. Focus on your next game. That's why Dave Jordan gets paid so much. But for us, you know, imagining what can happen, thinking about all the possibilities, I mean, that's that's what makes it so great. That's what makes it so exciting. So I, I'm all for people thinking about any scenario that's possible. I think it's, it's fantastic. It's great to be in this position to even have that chance. So I, just soak it in while you can. Yeah, I – I don't think it's it's fair to expect us not to <laughs> kind of get get hyped up. I mean, I was thinking earlier at some point that we're like how big this Notre Dame game is. Uh-huh. Because let's say we go to Notre Dame and we lose and we win out. We win the ACC. But a two loss team wins the ACC. The ACC is not getting in the playoff. Yeah, a lot of dominoes have to fall right. Yeah, so because you're looking at probably uh, an undefeated SEC team, a one-loss SEC team, only in the championship game when Georgia loses. So there's those two are in for sure. Yeah, uh, if we beat Notre, if we lose to Notre Dame to set up this situation, they've got a good chance at running the table. I mean, they have tough games, but it, we're not necessarily a two loss ACT team is a disaster. So this Notre Dame game is huge. Absolutely huge. I I don't know how to explain how, how big that is, but it would be very NC state luck. If we want to talk about that to win the ACC and not make the playoff. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know. I don't even know how I'd feel about it. You know, I'd be happy, but I'd be pissed, but you know, you still be happy that you won the ACC, right? AC champs. That's, that's the progress we've been talking about. But to, yeah, I, I get it. The missed opportunity would yeah. because of, you know, Notre Dame or some, you know, bad play or bad plays that 
the South Carolina game, I mean, that would be, that would sting a little bit. Yeah. And looking forward, I, the next two, two games are obviously the biggest challenges left. Yeah. But you win those two and it is going to be tough the rest of the, for the few games left to be excited for those games Yeah. to like that. That's a, there again, we're talking way ahead, but we have a bye week. So that's what this is for. But, um, that would be, uh, the crown jewel in Dorn's year. If he can, if he could beat these two teams and then keep his team excited enough to protect the season after that, that'd be huge. So I, I think, I think you could, I mean, I think it's possible because I, the guys are going to know the gravity of every single ACC game. You know, I, I, I I give Dorn that credit because I, th- I don't think that fact's lost on him. And I, you know, I feel pretty good if we get in that situation. That won't be our downfall, you know. Right. I think everybody should pay attention to that Clemson Georgia Tech game this weekend too, and I'd say pull hard for the Jackets just to give us that little bit of cushion. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Georgia Tech's going to give Clemson some problems. I know Clemson's defense is, is ridiculously good, but that, that triple option, you know, it's, it gives everybody problems, I should say. And then I just think Clemson's susceptible to that. So it'd be interesting to see how. Bryant. Yeah. Bryant's out, right? Yeah. So, eh. It'll be interesting to see what happens there, but I'm pulling for the Jackets. And speaking of the Jackets, I watched them play Miami, and I thought they had Miami beat, and they did have Miami beat. They, you know, they blew that game. But I'm kind of glad they did. You know, thinking about it, and again, getting ahead of ourselves. If I would rather play Miami in the ACC championship than Georgia Tech. Yeah, I think Miami is very uh, much Miami is very much equivalent to what we are. I think they're very similar. You know, but they have a freshman quarterback. They don't have their best running back, and it's not the triple option. You know, so I would much rather, in that scenario, play Miami. And so I'm kind of happy they won, even though I wasn't expecting it. I still don't think they're as good as were they number eight now. Yeah, that is too high. That's ridiculous. It, it's it's crazy. Um, I don't know. Moving on. Uh, this this one I, I don't. It's not relevant to anything, except for the fact that I like Mike Leach. But Nebraska goes out and hires the Washington State AD, and the general theory is that they want this, you know. And he's old; he's sixty eight or whatever. They want this guy because he's got a good relationship with Mike Leach. I I just think that's not a good fit. But what do you think about if you're the Nebraska AD? Are you hiring Mike Leach? No, because he won't go there. Um, I don't know. I don't see <laughs> maybe old Nebraska in the Big Twelve, but not 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 in the Big Ten. That that's a. I, I just I don't know. I, I love the guy. I'd love to see him somewhere where I could actually watch them play more. But uh, I, I it's it's not going to happen. I, over what they have now. I mean, the situation they're in, absolutely he'd be a good fit. Anybody would be, but it's, there's about this negative 2% chance of that happening. I, I don't understand why they would want to go spread or air raid or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they hired Bill Callahan. I don't know how many years ago it was not long ago. And he went to like the read option and people melted down and then like, what is he doing? Why are you doing it? You're Nebraska run the ball. If you're Nebraska, why don't you go after Paul Johnson or the, the Navy guy? I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his last name. Like, go back to the triple option. Go back to your roots, man. I don't understand why they – that's what I would do. You know you'd win eight, nine games every year, and then you'd occasionally compete. You know, you compete in the Big Ten this year because the rest of them aren't that great. Nobody should ever run the triple option. I would mute you if I could. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I would, that is you're, you're Nebraska, man. Terrible. You're Nebraska. Go for it. You're not going to get Ugh. the speedsters and the you know the athletes you need to run a spread in Nebraska. Run the ball, man. I don't know. Yeah. 
maybe not the triple option. Run some kind of option based offense. Well, I just don't think the air raid is what Nebraska fans want. Some Nebraska fan chewed me out and it's like, you don't know what we want. I was like, you're right, I don't, but <laughs> I think it's stupid. So that's what honestly I, I think I think they want to win. Yeah. And if that does it, then that's it. That's, you know, I, I don't think they've been so irrelevant for long or for so long that uh I hey, I'd be willing to change it up as long as it wasn't a triple option. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think that's the, that's the point. Just win. You know, get down to it. Uh, all right, we got to talk about it. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to have a special edition uh, podcast with our, our friend Wolfpack Patrol. UNC ruling comes down. They skate by. Nothing happened. Everybody could cheat. It wasn't just athletes. What are your thoughts? I mean, I don't really have any, honestly. I, I'm over it. Um, I, I understand, I guess, why the the ruling happened the way it did. By if you go by the rule book, that's fine. But uh, just no shame at all from UNC trying to get off the way they did. Uh, I was laughing how they, you know, I, a year or two ago, what at some point they're like, yeah, it was. Uh, an academic, whatever. I don't remember how they worded it. And then the last time they spoke, Oh, well that was a typo. We didn't mean that. So, um, their lawyers did their job. They found the, the loopholes. They, they said what they needed to say. Um, pretty much the least surprising thing ever. And I'm, I'm honestly glad it's over. I just wanted to go away and, uh, kind of like i wanted their banners to go away but some things just don't happen the way they should so i mean there's too much money involved when it when it gets down to it you scrape away all the non-essential you know noise around the situation and it just comes down to money like you're gonna the biggest brand or one of the biggest brands in college basketball you're not gonna you know drop the hammer on them and you know spite yourself and just destroy your revenue source but what they've done unintentionally most likely was just completely negate any power they've had i mean how do they enforce any academic standing or how do they enforce any you know eligibility rules when they just oh if everybody can do it everybody can any student can have access to whatever then that's that's their pass. I mean, they're going to let everybody pass. It's unbelievable. I just I was really surprised that they didn't use that opportunity to at least, you know, say, you know, step in and, and impart some sort of authority there. But they're really just, but bent at the knee to them. I mean, I think they it would have went to court, and I don't think the NCAA would have won in court. Yeah. Um, so then it there's legal fees. There's looking even more pathetic than they already do. So. uh I don't know. I just feel like they should have came to that conclusion a lot earlier than than they did. It shouldn't have taken years to do that. So uh, they can go away. Um, yeah, uh, related to the to that a little bit and, and moving on. Um, Matt Gray on Twitter asked us: Is Braxton Beverly that good, or like we losing anything out? Are we losing anything with him out? Uh, and for those who are living in a hole and didn't know this, basically immediately after the NCAA ruling on Carolina, it came out, and I'm using air quotes if you could see me, that the NCAA has ruled Braxton Beverly, a point guard transfer from Ohio State, ineligible. The reason he's ineligible is because he went to summer school at Ohio State before enrolling his freshman year. And then Thad Mata leaves, fired, I forgot what happened there, and Beverly decides to transfer. Thad Mata writes a letter to the NCAA in support of Beverly. Hey, he's a great kid. He went, he's going to class. You know, he should be able to play. And then the NCAA says, yeah, you can't, you can't play. Like that's the hypocrisy of it. It's just laughable. And I just, that's one of those things I'll never understand. You know, you, you suspend a kid or you hold him back from playing because he went to class, went to summer school. It's just stupid. Are we losing anything out with having him? We're losing anything with having him out. He's a he's a guard with that can shoot. I think we'll we'll, we'll need some guard depth running Keats's system. So, so my thoughts is you know you're missing out on a, a guy a reliable three point shooter. Now we have Alaric Freeman and and some of these other guys 
but you know the other guys aren't uh, look what is it bass jr the kid from uh charlotte i mean he's not a great shooter and then um <laughs> the guy returning for hurt his knee at the end of the year and his name slips me um Markel Johnson, he's not a great shooter either. And so you're you're missing a little bit of that that dynamic that you know I think Beverly can can provide. I, they're gonna appeal. Who knows what's gonna happen? Don't count on it. It's it's hypocritical and pretty much standard what you see from the NCAA. Um he had another question, thoughts on the Diamond S for the game against uh Notre Dame. So if you hadn't seen, they're switching up the helmet logo. I mean, ride Tuffy while you can. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the Tuffy bandwagon. Like, don't switch it while it's working. But again, you know, if you're if you don't take part in the superstitions, then it's cool. I mean, the the old Diamond S logo I thought was great. I think anything to get away from the Block S is beneficial to us because everybody's got the Block S: Michigan State, Syracuse, Stanford. You know, it just Use something to stand out. I'm all for it. What do you think? I'm. Uh, I love the the monogram diamond. I, I would be fine with that. I was anti uh, wolf on the helmet, but I'm also superstitious. <laughs> so um, just like I'm anti Dave Dorn wearing a damn t shirt every game, but <laughs> until we lose, he's got to wear that damn t shirt. It would have killed him to put a collar on when this all started, I guess. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta stay with it. Uh, you could say there's no, no merit to being superstitious, but put a little doubt in one player's head and it can snowball. So, uh, it's more a mental thing. Keep everything the same way you're winning. Yeah. I, I agree from the, from the player's perspective. You don't want to bust up any routine. I think you see that with baseball players the most. Doing all sorts of crazy, just yeah, yeah. All right, now on to America's favorite segment. There it is. So good. Uh, Matt Canada, uh, LSU two wins over two ranked teams in two weeks. I mean, just. LSU or uh, or Les Miles said they just had to to win out and they were fine and I guess they listened to him. Uh, beat Auburn twenty seven twenty three two oh six in the air one fifty seven on the ground doesn't sound like a lot but in comparison Auburn had one hundred sixty five in the air and one hundred eighty nine on the ground so it was just one of those nasty to watch SEC games. So uh, Matt Canada just just keeps doing it. I mean he might win Coach of the Year. I don't know. So. <laughs> Auburn was up. I don't know what it was like twenty four three or something. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. They were whipping them, and then just kept chipping away at it. I was I was really surprised. You know, LSU's got the talent. That's not any doubt about it. You know, there's no doubt that LSU's going to have the players. I think they're a little young, and I'm curious to my buddy who, <laughs> after LSU lost the Mississippi State game, I guess it was. I, I'm curious what his reaction was. Now I hadn't heard from him. You know, he was hating Matt Canada in the offense at the moment, but can't hate the result right now. Those are those are two W's. I think they it's not their offensive problems aren't aren't Canada's fault. That's that's Orgeron wanting to, to do things that, that he's not trying to do. So Yeah, um, Orgeron admitted that too. Uh, he, he came out and said, you know, I I was trying to keep him from doing some of the things that I didn't agree with, like some of the motions and the jet sweeps and stuff. And he said he got out of his way and hey, look what happens. They won two games. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, just it, it, the legend continues that that's the, the gist of it. Uh, can only can't hope to contain it. We can all just hope to deal with it. So, uh, how have you done on, uh, on your your locks of the week, well, I don't remember who I picked last week, but I'm sure it was right. I was having, I, oh yeah, That's, <laughs> I yeah. had a good week last week. Uh, I felt pretty good about it. Uh, who do you, who you got this week? You know, I it was really hard for me to not take Alabama going off at minus thirty four and a half or minus thirty five against Tennessee, depending on which book you look at. Uh, 
I, I want to take Alabama, but I won't. Um, Louisville's getting six and a half at FSU. Yeah. And I, I have no faith in Louisville. Um, lost the, but lost I can't. College. We didn't mention that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they still have a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, and FSU's just skating by. I mean, they're just they're just trying to get by. So, uh, give give me give me Lamar Jackson at six and a half points, and I, I think they'll cover that. I'm, I don't think they'll win, but I think they'll cover. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I, I think they actually do win that game. I don't think they're great, but man, Lamar Jackson was so good. I, yeah, I can't yeah. see them. I guess I can see them having a hangover after the Boston College game. I mean, they lost at home to Boston College, which was insane. Um, I don't know. I, that'd be that'd be an interesting game to watch. I think Lamar Jackson's too good. I think Florida State's kind of doesn't know what's happening right now. I think there's some other. Yeah, I, there's some interesting lines out there. I thought, um, who did I see that I, I liked? The Carolina, I think Carolina's 21 point dogs of Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech. I don't like that game, but I think that's an interesting line to watch. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Virginia Tech covers that. I don't, that'd be tough, man. I think Carolina's awful, but I don't know about Virginia Tech yet. I'm still, I'm still, my, work, my uh, jury is still out on them. Another Miami deal. They haven't played anyone or, or Notre Dame, you know? I, yeah. Yeah. I just you don't know what you got with them, so right. Um, Tennessee, Alabama is a thirty-five now. Yeah, I think Tennessee covers that, but yeah, only by like two points, if that. Who we got, man? I don't, I don't see any of these. I really like Virginia, Boston College. Virginia's favorite at seven. How good of a job has uh, Bronco Mendenhall done at Virginia? Yeah, yeah. I mean that. I remember everybody looked cross when they made that hire, but mm-hmm. I mean it's it's worked out pretty well. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's get given six and a half to Wake. I don't think it'll be that close. I think it'll be close, but I think they cover a touchdown. Right. I, I think the. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not still not sure about Wake either. Man, I don't know anything. Apparently, I'm still not sure about Wake. <laughs> oh, here's it's one. hard to concentrate on other teams right now. Here's one. Q's Miami. Miami's getting giving sixteen and a half for Syracuse. Both of them had yeah, no, I don't like that at all. Both of them had emotional games. Syracuse has an extra day to rest. Man, sixteen and a half. Give me, give me Q's and give me seventeen on that one. Yeah, that seems fair. That's interesting. Not a whole lot of great lines. I think there's another one is um, BYU is getting five and a half at ECU. BYU is awful. And yeah, but he's, he's pretty <laughs> pirates. Still don't know how we lost that Man, game. What an ugly oh. game. What an ugly. We should go to that game. I'd love to. It'd be free tickets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. I don't like, love any of these games this week. Not super good. Yeah, I'm going to go with. I'm going with Q. Give me Q's and 16 and a half. Seems fair. Yeah. So. Who's who's your top four? Let's put it out there. Uh, Should be uh, pretty easy. Alabama, yeah. still there, been there. Uh, UGA, I I still don't know if I believe in a team in the SEC East, but um, I don't think they lose a game until the SEC championship. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I can't I can't I can't argue with it. So Penn State at three. I'm gonna go TCU four. Uh, Penn State, uh, given the it's given hard the Big Ten to love. State. I was getting ready to say it's hard for me to put them up there because I still – they're a one-player team, and that's a shitty conference. So um, I, I'm close to, to TCU over Penn State, but I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I have Bama, Georgia. I have Penn State at 3-2. I, I didn't – I don't know. I debated about TCU. I'm not so hung up on the one loss. If Clemson has Kelly Bryant – I'm putting them at four. I'm not ready to drop them yet. Their defense is too good. They don't have him right now. I know, now, but I'm just saying if if they do, I'm playing the hypotheticals. I don't know. I just – I don't know. I think they got a tricky situation this weekend. 
And God knows they need all the help they can get next week or the two weeks from now. That's so. right. They do. <laughs> but you got anything else, man? No, I think that's all I got. Uh, again, thanks everybody for listening. Engage our sponsors if you, if you can, if you're in the, in the market for any of those. And thanks for listening. Go Pack. Go Pack. Go Pack.